Greetings from my kitchen pulpit. I'm Karen Clymer here in Southwest Oklahoma. Let's talk about Jesus and let's get to kneading some bread. First, I'll talk to these with the beautiful roses that my husband got me for uh, Valentine's Day. And that's a little bit past three days past. So they don't look as pretty as they were. But you can see they're still very nice and I'm so appreciative of them. And of course, got the lighthouse here. You can't see it as much. So I'll, I'll, put, it, I'll put the flower here first place. But... Uh, but the lighthouse he made for me uh, several, uh, probably a couple of years ago, and I always like to have it. But it's in the background today. Right here we have the flowers. All right. We're needing bread for the master. No, he's not eating this bread, but we will before it's all over with. But we get to need, need it for 10 minutes. And we're talking about uh, the Lord, what he's laid on my heart was to talk about as I was needing the bread to give a, a devotion. So I'm so thankful that the Lord... You know, I like it that he needs us sometimes. He begins to need us and he's work because he loves us so much and he's preparing us that we'll be useful for him. And, you know, we'll be able to rise to every occasion. Well, I want to know, is this bread alive? That's one of the main things I need to know. So right now we've got that timer started. We need 10 minutes on this. is my grandmother's rolls I'm making today instead of my regular sourdough rolls. And so my grandmother, she was, she made wonderful rolls and I wish I'd have paid attention at the time you know I didn't I mean they were just always there when we got to uh, got to her house I wish I had seen her preparing them uh, but anyway I'm thankful that my sister had requested a recipe years ago and so we we have that and so I wanted to make I make grandma's rolls occasionally all right let's talk about Jesus here and I want to see yes these rolls are alive I can tell this dough is alive and I want to be in live in Christ don't you and we, as a silver citizen, I always want to be working for the Lord and honoring Him, no matter what my age is and how many years I live. I want to be faithful and true to the Lord with all of my heart, my soul, my mind, my spirit, my whole being, just devoted to the Lord. And the title of our message today is, I Delight to Do Your Will. And Abraham was known as a friend of God. And I tell you, he was a true friend. What I put on here, I said, Friends are like that, just like I delight to do your will. Well, we're talking about specifically doing the will of the Lord and being his child and being a friend and just being ready and willing whenever the Lord wants us to do something, whatever it is, that we are just ready and so excited and honored to work for the Lord. I to delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. That's from Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8. But I believe Abraham was a person that said, could have said the same thing and felt that same way. I delight to do your will, O oh Lord. So in God's word, we uh, we see some who seem to go above and beyond. And I think of Joseph. You know, there are people like Joseph and like Daniel that just went above and beyond to work for the Lord, to honor him and just whatever he wanted. And Abraham, we think of now Abraham and he was late. His name, he was Abram and then until his name was changed to Abraham. He's going to be the father of, of many nations and how the Lord blessed him. And, and very significantly, God called him a friend before it was over with. And this was why, because his heart was always turned to please the Lord. And we're going to contrast him today with, uh, with uh, Abraham's life, with that of his nephew Lot that he raised. And, and uh, he ra after, after this man's Lot's dad had died, well, it was uh, Abraham that apparently saw the, the need to raise him, to love him, and take care of him. He needed he needed some guidance and help. Glad to see you, Carol. That's the only name I see right now. But we appreciate others that will be coming in later on. Okay, so we're going to talk about the difference in these two men. I think how, how that Abraham was called out. Of, we'll just call him Abraham, though he was initially first was Abram. But when he came, he was called out of idolatry. And how the Lord spoke to him. He just felt the sense of the presence of God. And what he did was he built an altar. You know, he didn't build an idol. He built an altar. He recognized this was a much higher being. This was not. He very likely had idols that he had served. But something about that he recognized it was this was God talking to him. That he, he didn't know him. But yes, he has having an encounter here. And he built an altar. And as time went on, you find out that he went back. That encounter, he had, he wanted more. What he went back there to that place, and how did he begin to worship? And everywhere he went, 
He built an altar. You know why he did that? He wanted a relationship with the Lord. He wasn't content with just having an encounter, but he wanted this relationship. He wanted to know more about God and how God blessed him and encouraged him and helped him. And as he just drew, drew near to the Lord and just built this altar, it wasn't a, it wasn't idolatry. He didn't have it along with his idols. In fact, I think he totally was done with, with the idols. But I think, though he would have, he could have said like David did, I delight to do your will, and your law is within my heart. It was what, that's what he was drawn to, like a magnet. You know, as he, as he got close to the Lord, it was just like a magnet just drawing him. That's what he wanted. His heart was in tune with the Lord. And, you know, he just, and he became, they take, we'll talk about Lot now. This nephew that he had helped now, he doesn't have a father. His father has died, and so now here is Uncle Abraham is going to take him, and he's going to raise him and going to help him. Well, how that he got off, and uh, as time grew up, and I'm sure that uh, I would think that Abraham, Uncle Abraham, gave him, uh, got him started as far as his flocks. The Bible tells us that Abraham was a very rich man. Well, it came time that as they were together there, he had the, the the nephew here and had his flocks and had Abraham had his flocks. Well, next thing you knew, the herdsmen, they were quarreling and fussing. And it got to where it was so, it was hard because there wasn't enough land for both of them. And finally, Abraham looked at, at, at his nephew Lot and he said, Lot, I don't want anything to come between us. He said, we're like brothers, you know. He said, uh, uh, I, I don't want this. He said, and your herdsmen and my herdsmen, they're quarreling, they're fussing. That's not what we want. That's not best for us. So he said, I tell you what. He said, you choose what area you want to take. If you want to go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you want to go to the right, I'll go to the left. And so he made that day. He gave him he gave him the first choice. It's what you want, Lot. You, 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 take, you take first choice, what you want. And he looked around and he looked. He saw those fertile, fertile plains down there oh my he said this is what i want right down here these jordan plains and he said well okay if that's what you want he said then i'll take the other he said i'll i'll go the other way and so they they parted like that well you know as time went by next thing you know, word comes to uh, to uncle abraham that lot has been captured uh, that the kings have gotten in a big battle and that lot has been captured everything he has and what did he do this man I really believe he sought God. I really believe he prayed and sought the Lord. And he gathered up. He said, they, he, these people, I guess these families so large and all, they kind of had their own army. And I believe it was 318 pe men that he took went down and he rescued a lot. So I think about this man, Abraham. He still had compassion. He didn't say, well, that's what he chose, so big deal. No, he still felt a responsibility. He was concerned for him and he went to help him and sure enough he was able to rescue him bring him to a place of safety he felt responsible but he was compassionate and responsible now I don't know what he said to to him I, I don't know I know this that one thing the scripture said Abraham I know him this is what God said Abraham Abraham I know him that he will command his children after him so this was not his son but I believe he raised him like a son and so he had great compassion and concern, and he did everything he could for him. But you know, when he's out on his own, and now he's been rescued again, but the sad thing is, then as time went by, uh, we find out that this man, he didn't do like Abraham. He didn't serve the Lord, but Abraham was so faithful. In fact, the scripture calls him, he was the friend of God. And you know, God said one day, he said, Shall I keep this from Abraham, what is going to happen? I'm going to rain down fire on and brimstone on, on Sodom and Gomorrah and these neighboring cities here. They are so wicked. Their wickedness has come up to me, and I'm just going to destroy them. Oh, my. Well, that was a horrible thing. And he said, but God said, uh, shall I? Can I not tell Abraham? I must tell Abraham, my friend. I must tell him. So when Abraham... 
found out when the Lord spoke to him and all oh, as he began to intercede as Abraham began to intercede for him because he thought that's he said my, my, my that's where my nephew is he's like my son that's where he is I can't take this this was and he began to call out you know what the time came there just there wasn't hard, anybody in that place that was living for God and this man Lot had become he said drifted so far See, the beginning of it, he just pitched his tent close to Sodom. But it was a wicked, wicked place, and he knew that. But he probably thought, oh, it doesn't bother me. I'm going to be off out here with the flocks and all. But here he is. Now we find out he lives there. He's a resident. Now this is where he is. He's in, he's in Sodom. That's where he lives. He's married. He has a family. Oh, my. And so Abraham, as he's called out to God, God sent angels. God literally sent angels down because of the prayer of this man. Think of it. Think of it. What we can do, we can intercede for people that, you know, other than ourselves, we can call out. Instead of just saying, well, that's what they chose, big deal. We pray. We believe. And that's what the Lord notified him so he could, and he could see what he could, would do. He said, how can I not tell him? And, oh, I'm, Abraham was so glad he knew what the angels had been sent down there. And the horrible thing is there was such gross sin there in, uh, and these, the men that came into the city, uh, it was awful how, how the, the, the wickedness that was there, that was in that city, and the angels that had come, and the men that were so wicked that they wanted to do evil things with those angels, and how, and that I think about, this is how far that Lot, you think how far Lot had gone from where, now here he is with the family, and he offered his own daughters to those men to do whatever they would with them. Horrible. And I think how far he drifted. He never dreamed. He never, I don't believe a lot. You couldn't have told him that someday you will offer your daughters and said, you, you'll just literally just let whatever any man would want to do with him, you would do this. But out of fear, he would just, I think, how horrible. He never dreamed he would sink to that level. But God miraculously help because those angels was able to preserve those daughters and get those locked the door keep them safe and the angels then said we've got to get out of this place so when it come time to leave and Abraham and, and it was Lot was looking around I believe Abraham was since interceding still praying and believing God to do something but you know the Lord lets us make our choices and so Lot had made a horrible choice and he didn't want to leave. Well, I don't. And the angel said, we've got to get out. We've got to get you out of this. And we've got to tell him where they were going to be taking them. No, no. He said, I don't want to go there. Well, what about another place? And I, why? How would he do this? He was so entrenched with this. He wanted to live. If he couldn't live in Sodom, he wanted to live as close as he could. Is what it seemed to amount to. And as he cried, well, I, I don't want to go where they were saying, telling you to go. I don't want to go there. I, I, let's go. I, there's another place I want to go. And he just kept delaying and delaying. How awful. How awful. And I believe Abraham was still praying and believe, believing. But you know what? We make our own choices. Abraham, Uncle Abraham was interceding. He had done everything he could. So the final thing, when finally the angel says, we've got to go. Well, I don't want to go there. I want to go somewhere else. So they agreed the place that they could go. And as they left out, you had to look straight. You do not look back. Well, Lot's wife looked back, and immediately she turned to a pillar of salt. That is just a shocking thing, but it happened. Well, here, well, then Lot really was. He was so compromised, but he managed to make it out of the city without looking back. But before it was all said and done, you know what we find out? We find out that he's off in a cave in a mountain, he and his daughters. How horrible, that, how far he's come. And when you look at the life, that he's living now in his daughters got him drunk and he fathered their children it's just he never dreamed of this incestuous relationship he would ever have it's, it's like they say sin will take you farther than you want to go it'll keep you longer than you want to stay it'll cost you a whole lot more than you want to pay but I think of the difference in these lives of how Abraham was so blessed because he honored God and I believe, he, like, like David said, I delight to do your will, O oh Lord. Oh, my God, your law is within my heart. And this is the way that he was. The Lord was speaking to 
to Abraham and Abraham wanted to hear from God and he built an altar and he was faithful to God. Yes, he did make some mistakes. Who hasn't? We all have sinned. We've missed the mark. But he came back to God. He repented. And you know, this lot, this nephew here that he raised, had that privilege to have this man that had a relationship with God and he could talk to Lot. But Lot chose, you make your own choices. You know, Uncle Abraham could do these things to help him. He rescued him once. Now he can't rescue him. It's up to him. He's made this choice. He pitched his tent towards Sodom, and now then he moved to Sodom. He married somebody from there that was just absolutely devoted. The Sodom was in her. She wanted to live there, and they loved the place. So he was so conflicted, so compromised, and hearing a horror of horrors when he re realized what had happened. His daughters were pregnant, and he was the dad. They had gotten him drunk. Choices. He never should have even been anywhere near this place. It just pays to stay close to the Lord. I tell you, and honor the Lord with all of our heart. Let me talk about those boys, though, that were born. When those sons were born, the firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. And as for the younger, she also bore a son and called his name ben Ami. He is the father of the sons of Ammon to this day. This is from Genesis chapter 19, verse 16 through 18. Choices are so very, very important. Altar builder or compromiser, which will we be? And I like how that Abraham set that example. He was an altar builder. He didn't just build an altar there and look at it and say, isn't it pretty? He worshipped. He worshipped God. Glad to see you, Cheryl. Hope you're feeling a whole lot better. He worshipped. He glorified God. And he had taught this nephew. But the nephew had had been had left. And he was okay to leave, but don't go living around Sodom. He wound up in Sodom. There he was married to a wife that was just, Sodom was in her. It was a wicked city. And now their daughters, now here, this the mother had lost her life because she was so in love with Sodom and that lifestyle. So here you are now. This is where it ended. But I think the shameful life, both sons, said Moab and ben Ami were both begotten in shame and lived shameful lives. I read that one of the commentators had said, let's settle it and say, I delight, I, I, Karen Clymer, delight to do the will of of you, Lord. I delight to do your will. I love your word, and your word is just written in my heart. Why? Because I read it every day. And what about you? Place your name in that scripture and say, I delight to do your will, oh God. And whatever, that's how friends are. That's what friends are like. You know, I'm a friend of God, a child of a child of God. But it's whatever you say, Lord, all day, every day. That's what I want. I delight to do your will. Oh, God. I want us to be a, be a freshness, just like these flowers at one time fresh. They're going to, they're already starting to droop. But may we as children of God just keep going back, going to the well of salvation and drawing that fresh, clean water and worshiping and glorifying the Lord and reading our Bible every day. There's nothing like it. And just tell the Lord, throughout the day. I delight to do your will, O oh Lord. It's so good to know you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your goodness. What will you have me to do today, right now, Lord? And I think all day long that just blesses the heart of God. Let's see what we got left here now. It is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve His purpose. And that is found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 13, uh, 2 and 13, verse, and that's from the J.B. Phillips translation. Now, I tell you what, silver citizens, let's just get busy and stay busy and keep honoring the Lord with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our spirit, with joy and with gladness. I love you. I look forward to seeing you next Friday, the Lord willing. You have a blessed rest of the day.